All right, Shalom. Of course, I want to start off by giving all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls God, Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And um, it's just going to be a, a quick video. Um, it's just about to be 2023, just a couple of hours from now. Um, you know, so I just wanted to do a quick video. <laughs> you know, a couple of things came to mind. Um, one thing that pissed me off the other day that happened to me. You know, you'll get a kick out of this. This, this is funny. This is unneeded aggravation. Um, so I got a, a gift card, right? Somebody gave me a gift card um, for, um, you know, for the Dollar Tree, right? So I went to a, um, a store, which basically it was one of those, those brand new stores where it's basically two in one, right? So it, on one side of the store, it was the, uh, the family dollar. And then on the other side of the store, it was the Dollar Tree, right? So it's two stores in one, right? If you want to go to Family Dollar, you can go there. If you want to use, the, you know, the Dollar Store, you can go there. Because it's both of the stores in one building. Right, great idea, right? So I had a Dollar Store gift card. And the building, keep in mind, the building literally says Dollar Tree on the top of it, right? It has two signs on it. One side says Family Dollar. The other side says Dollar Tree. So I took my Dollar Tree gift card here and I deliberately went out of my way to, um, you know, only pick items that were on the Dollar Tree side of the store. You know, therefore, you know, because I didn't want to have to pay cash and use my card at the same time. You know, because if I pick stuff from the family dollar, that's not covered under the Dollar Tree because it's a different store. Right. So I um, deliberately went out of my way to only pick items from the Dollar Tree side so it wouldn't choke up the system, uh, you know, and, and take even more unneeded aggravation to sort that out. Um, so long story short, what happened was I go to check out and I put my, again, I'm on the, the Dollar Tree side of the store, right? And I swipe my Dollar Tree gift card through the machine and apparently they said they don't accept it. It's like, wait a second, what? Wait a second. I, when, when I heard that, I had to I had to think a second. It's like, I asked the guy, it's like, wait a second, what? Hold on a second. The sign on the store says the Dollar Tree. So how is it that I have a Dollar Tree gift card? I come in the store to purchase items with my gift card to your store, and I somehow can't do it. And then they try to say, well, it's, it's only family dollar, right? We, we only take family dollar gift cards. It's like, wait a second, what? The, the sign on the store, it's not just Family Dollar, it's Family Dollar and Dollar Tree. Both the stores in one. Now, say for an example, uh, of course, if the name on the store was only Family Dollar, I would, of course, would never, you know, bring a, um, you know, a Dollar Tree card to Family Dollar. Of course, I wouldn't do that. But the point is that the store literally is both the stores in one, right? One part of the store is Family Dollar. The other part of the store is the Dollar Tree. Right. So <laughs> it's like, wait a second, what? How the hell is it that that the name of the store is the Dollar Tree? So I come to use my Dollar Tree gift card at your store and apparently you don't accept it. The hell, that, that's a <laughs> that could be a lawsuit right there. That, that that's a that's a false advertisement right there. And I know that other people had the same problem because a guy said, you know, oh, well, you know, a few other people, you know, came in with, you know, the same problem. So a few other people probably got pissed off about it. And rightfully so. Right. That pisses me off. There's no reason why um, there should be that type of aggravation. The name on the front of the building is the Dollar Tree. So you should be able to accept my gift card for your establishment. So, so that, that was unneeded aggravation that pissed me off. You know, so I had to pay cash. I had to go out of my way to pay cash. Shit, and I was lucky because I wasn't even going to take any cash in the store. I was just going to use my gift card because I would have sufficient funds on that to pay for whatever I was going to get. So, um, you know, that was some unneeded aggravation that just happened. Um, but anyway, anyway, you know, another thing, you know, since it's 2023, you know, in just a few hours from now, um, you know, we're going to have to see what Elder Apostle Dahar, you know, coins this year, right? Because, you know, every year he gives the, um, 
the new year he gives it a new name. Excuse me. He gives every year a um a new name, right? So like say for an example, um, 2022 was called the um the year of the turnip, right? This was the year of the turnip, and held this <laughs> this has been a year of the turnip, man. This has been a turned up year. Shit, the last couple of years, man, going back to 2020, right, which that started off with a worldwide um, epidemic, right? 2020, that started off with a worldwide epidemic. 2021 started off with um, the capital of the United States getting um, broken into by Americans. That was a big event. And then 2022 started off with another war, uh, war going on. Right, the Russia and Ukraine conflict. So the last three years, at the you know the two um, beginning months of the year, started off with big world changing events. So that's big right there. So the, hell yeah, th this was a year of a turn up, man. That this was a turned up year, and that's for damn sure. Hey, look, man, the Lord's speeding up those times. That's why it tells you in what is that Matthew chapter twenty four verse twenty one. That, hey, look, if the Lord didn't shorten those times, there would be no flesh alive to be saved. But guess what? For the elect's sake, those days are going to be shortened. Right, so the Most High is going to shorten these days for our sake. You know, because the way that things are going right now, man, hell, nobody will be alive, you know, in 2030. Shit, ha <laughs> half of the world's population is, uh, you know, being affected right now, just speaking on the one subject of how, um, you know, the Russians won't allow the, uh, the Ukraine to export, you know, grain out of their country, you know, because that's a breadbasket for the world, right? A lot of other countries rely on that, that country, or as Larkin Rose would say, crunchy, for, um, you know, grain imports to feed their people. So the Russians aren't letting them export those goods. So people are dying of starvation that way. And then, of course, you got people getting blown up over there in the uh, in that country. You know, so it's a lot going on, man. Then you got these dumbass out here saying that we're living in the kingdom of heaven. What, what type of dumbass could be out here in 2023 and, and sit here and tell me that we're living in the kingdom of heaven? Like, like what type of strong substances are you smoking? And do you think that these guys are just joking around, you know, trying to have a good laugh, you know, trying to be sarcastic, you know, claiming that we're living in the kingdom of heaven? But they're, they're not being sarcastic. They're dead serious when they say that, right? It's not any type of joke. Being dead serious. That these people in Ukraine are getting blown up. Oh, those people are in the kingdom of heaven. It's like, what type of dumbass would say something like that? Apparently, Gonzo and Primal, man. And, uh, oh, what's this cat? Professing preterist, and there's there's too many of these people out here that, that I can't I can't even name all of them. You know, something that seems so ridiculous to me is there's more people in the world that would call themselves a preterist than there are people that will call themselves a Hebrew Israelite. Like online, it seems to be, at least from my experience throughout the years, that um. Within the last couple of years now, mainly the people we run into, um, you run into more preterists, right? People that believe we're living in the kingdom of heaven and that the Bible has completely been fulfilled. You run into more of them than people who call themselves Hebrew Israelites. And that's just a damn shame right there. It's such a, it's a damn shame right there. It's such a... Uh, retarded and, and preposterous and uh, delusional belief would have more followers worldwide and believers worldwide than us, you know, telling our people that they're the chosen people, right? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the real Israelites according to the Bible, right? But there's shit, there's more people going around that call themselves a preterist than there are people that know that they're Israelites. As weird as that sounds, that's just what it seems. You know, so it's like speaking on that factor, right? It's like, 
you know, it boggles the mind to think that, you know, it, well, here we are now, you know, 2023. It's like, so, so you really have cats going around out here in 2023, you know, if all of the pain and suffering that they see going on, and you know, in the world, you know, not only among our people, you know, because our people, of course, got it the worst is, you know, hell, not, not only are we catching hell, you know, from the other nations, but we're also catching hell by way of those curses, right? According to uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, right? We're under all of those curses to this very day, man. You know, so, <laughs> so, so it just boggles the mind that, that how, how the hell could somebody today sit there and, and tell you for straight face, like, like this cat, Primal Man or, or Gonzo or Pastor William Bell, right? Or, or this cat, uh, profe uh, Professing Preterist, whatever this dude's name is. Which I had a debate with him like two weeks ago. Really cool guy, but but he he clearly is um is a whack with his understanding of the scriptures. You know to to say it politely, um, but it's just unbelievable that you have people going around now here that that will try to tell you it with all of the you know the pain and suffering and adversity that our people are going through you know on a day to day basis. Um, that they're living in the kingdom of heaven. It's like, so really? Like, there, there's nothing better to come? That, that, like, this is it? Right, a Ronnie McNutt joke. Uh, but but it's like, really, th th this is it? This is all, all that the Lord has to offer to us? Is life right now that we're living, you know, here on earth, you know, uh, day to day life? This is it? Now, that's depressing right there to believe something like that. Now, you got to feel bad for some of these guys, man. You know, because they, they really believe that this is it. Right? That the life that we're living right now, that this is it, man. Hell, they're, they're living that YOLO lifestyle, right? You only live once. Right? That That's what these cats out here, these simps out in the world, that's the lifestyle they're living. That YOLO lifestyle. Right? You only live once lifestyle that's the mindset that these people have out here man you know so they're it's it's you know it's all about um you know the me 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 mindset right right it's it's all about uh you know what can i do to make my life better at the expense of everyone else right ain't nobody looking out for anybody else it's all about self out here man it's all about how you know what can you do to um to F everyone else over to uplift yourself, for lack of better words. Right, what can I get at the expense of everyone else? That's the mindset that all of these these bastards have out here, man. Especially over here in Babylon the Great, which is the United States, not no Vatican City. Got dumbass out here. How the hell could you have such a simple ass loser out here go around and say that the Vatican City is Mystery Babylon in 2023? I, I mean, you, you gotta be... You, you, you got to have some type of mental issue to, to believe something like that <laughs> right now in the world, man. I mean, it's like, damn. You know, hell, I, I've heard a lot of stupid ass shit, you know, as far as these theories go. Shit, I was just listening to something earlier today, man, on uh, what's this guy's channel? I want to say it's Standing for Truth is the channel name. And there was a debate that they had on there. Where this simp tried to come on and try to prove that dinosaurs never existed. It's like, wait a second, what? This guy's trying to say that dinosaurs never existed? It's like, what type of nonsense are these people talking about? You know, and then if you listen to his arguments, all he's going to go on there and talk about is, well, uh, you know, the earth is young, you know, not millions of years old. So see, that proves that the dinosaurs didn't exist. Because the earth is young, you know, not millions of years old. Which I agree with him that the earth's not, you know, millions of years old. The earth is relatively young, of course. But that doesn't mean the dinosaurs never existed. That's just ridiculous right there. That's uh, that's pure stupidity to, to make such an illogical and foolish statement as that. Hey, but the Apocrypha tells you that many have deceived themselves by their own vain faults and opinions. Right, so that, that's, you know, that's your own opinion, right? Hey, look, if you want to believe that, you believe what you want to believe, right? If you want to believe that, then you believe that. Shit, I can't do nothing to change your mind. You believe what you want to believe. Are you wrong? Hell yeah, you're wrong. 
But hey, if you want to believe that, if hey, if that floats your boat, then you believe it then. Shit, if you want to believe that Christ is a Caucasian or that salvation is open to all nations of people, you can believe that. What is that? Romans 3 verse 3? For what is some did not believe? Does their unbelief make our faith without effect? So, hey, look, so if you don't want to believe in the God that we're talking about, right, Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai, if you don't want to believe in what we're talking about, hey, then look, that, that's on you, right? You believe what you want to believe. You know, we're all going to have to give an answer for it one day. You know, hell, the atheists are going to have to stand before the Lord, right? Christians are going to have to stand before the Lord. The Muslims are going to have to as well. Right? Everyone's going to have to stand before the, the judgment seat of Christ, man. What is that? That's, uh, what is that? Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse, uh, oh, excuse me, what is that? Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, I want to say. Right, that we're all going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to receive a judgment for our works, whether they be good, or whether they be bad. And that cuts the Christian church because they'll be out here, you know, telling you, you know, it, it's not about works, right? It's not about works. You know, you just got to claim Christ and you're good. But I mean, they're cut because Christ clearly said in Matthew 7, 21, you know, not, hey, look, not everybody that says to me in that day, you know, Lord, Lord, not everyone's going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? So he said there's going to be some people that claim to believe on Christ that are going to be rejected. So see, that demonstrates that you got to have works in this thing, man. That's why on the last page of the Bible, you know, Yahawashai, or who people call Christ, uh, Revelation 22, verse 12, he said, Hey, look, I'm coming quickly, and I'm going to reward every man according to his works. Wait a second, according to his works, I thought the Christian church said he didn't have to have any type of works. And what are works? Works uh, A work can be by keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That That's a good work right there. Or another one, right, by selling your earthly possessions, you know, and distribu distributing that money unto the poor. That's That's a good work right there. And we see a list of good works that please God. Right. Say, for example, if we help out a, you know, one of our brothers who's in need, right, the Most High is pleased with that. Right. The Lord likes that. Those are good works. And, and you clearly see this if you go to Matthew, the 25th chapter, right, start at verse uh, 31. You had two groups of believers. The one group of believers, you know, they believed on Christ, but then they also had works to back up their faith. You know, they visited you know, those when they were in prison, right? They clothed those who had no clothes. They fed those who were hungry, right? They helped out those who were less fortunate. But the other group of people who also believed on Christ, they didn't do those things. So guess what? They all got rejected by why the ones who did have those works and faith, those were the ones who Christ accepted and they received salvation. But the other people that believed on Christ but did not demonstrate their faith by their work, they all got rejected. You know, so the Christian church is definitely an error, man. You know, you, you can't just claim that you believe and think that you're all good. You, you can't do that, man. You got to have works to demonstrate your faith. What What is that? That's James, the second chapter, right? They said all, you know, show my faith by my works. Right, and that's what we're doing, man. We're showing our faith by our works. That's why, you know, we're coming out here, you know, week in, week out, and, you know, posting these videos online, you know, whether we go out to the highways and byways, whether we post online discussions about the scriptures, whether we make sit-down videos. You know, every man's lot is different in this thing, right? And that goes back to the parable in, uh, what is that, Matthew 25, verse 14 on down, the parable of the three men, one was given five talents, the other man was given one talent, and the other man was given two talents. Right, the one that was given five talents, he, you know, he increased, and he got ten talents at the end of the day. And the man who got two talents, you know, he increased, got four. The man who had one, you know, he hid that talent. And what does that represent? It represents us, you know, in this truth, right, with the, you know, the abilities that we have, you know, to share this message, you know, that's how we gain our, um, our, our token, so to speak, right? That's how we gain those tokens. Like, 
you know, we see in that parable there, right? Or those talents, as it calls them, right? That's how we gain them. Is, and the talents represent the, um, you know, we're searching for the elect. Like it says, well, oh, what is that scripture? That's Jeremiah. I want to say Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16, if I'm not mistaken. It says, I'll send for many fishers, but then I'll send for many hunters, says the Lord, right? And they'll hunt them out of the holes and, and out of the rocks. Right, so right now we're fishers, right? Fishers of men, meaning what? You know, we're out here, we're giving that gospel, right? The good news for the children of Israel, right? That you blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans are the true Israelites, according to the Holy Bible, and salvation is open for you. And of course, you know, we have confusion to face, you know, Israelites that might look like the other nations as well. You know, so we're, you know, putting this message of hope out there. You know, that's what we're doing, right? We're doing the good work. Whether that be going out to the highways and byways, whether that be putting this word on the internet, because this word goes a long way, man. You know, hell, I've had people who tune into these videos from Wuhan, right, from, from uh, over in damn China and Japan. Right, so th this word has been spread throughout the entire world, man, by way of this internet. Because, hey, look, let, let me attest for myself, man. And shit, I, th this isn't only for me. This is probably for you as well. And, you know, m countless other brothers out there that would consider themselves to be in the know. If it wasn't for the YouTube, we wouldn't know shit about nothing. If it wasn't for YouTube, shit, if it wasn't for YouTube, I probably wouldn't even have, uh, you know, got into the scriptures. If it wasn't for YouTube, the, um, you know, the whole thing about, you know, these conspiracies coming to light, right, that are exposing the wicked elite to have dominion over the earth, right, they're being exposed by the internet that they've, um, you know, allowed everyone to have access to. They're being exposed on this platform that they've set up, which ultimately was the Most High who set up this platform to fulfill His will. Okay, but these elites, they're getting exposed by way of the internet. So anyway, I, I don't want to go too far off topic. But, um, you know, going back to what I said at the beginning, you know, hey, we, we got to see what uh, Elder Apostle Dahar, you know, calls this new year. Because every new year that comes in, you know, the apostles, or I should say Apostle Dahar, you know, he gives each year a name. Right, like I believe the previous year was, uh, I believe he called it, hastening unto the day of the coming of, of Yahweh or something like that. Um, you know, this year he called the year of the turnip, right? So we'll see what the elder apostle, you know, calls this year, man. You know, we'll see what the spirit gets on him to, um, you know, coin 2023. You know, because hell, man, I remember, hey, look, time's going by quick, man, because I remember five years ago, um... Well, how would you pronounce it? It was back in 2017, right? It was uh, New Year's Eve. So the next day would be 2018, uh, 18, excuse me. Um, so how would you pronounce it? Would it be the um, 2017 um, New Year's Eve or 2018 New Year's Eve? Because it was technically 2017, but then the next day would be 2018. So... I'm not sure what the proper pronunciation of that would be. You can tell me below. But um, but anyway, the reason I brought this up is, hell, I remember back then, right, five years ago, I was, um, you know, watching the GMS. Uh, they, they do a stream, they call it um, New Year's Eve of Destruction is what they call the live streams, right? They do one every year on New Year's. So, you know, I tune in, right? I tune in and listen to them. You know, so shit, I remember five years ago back in, you know, uh, 2017, you know, uh, New Year's Eve of 2018, you know, watching their, um, you know, New Year's Eve uh, live streams on YouTube, man. It's like, damn, hell, I was 15 years old back then. So five years went by that quick. It's like, damn, you know, the time truly flies, man. Shit, here we are, you know, half a, um, half a decade later. You know, so the Lord's speeding up the time, it seems like, man. You know, these years are flying by, right? The months are flying by. Shit, it feels like it was just yesterday that, um, you know, it was, um, you know, New Year's Eve of 2020. 
right? It feels like it was just yesterday, but it was three years ago, right? So, you know, time is moving by quick, man. You know, and that goes back to the scripture I quoted earlier. Uh, what is that? Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22. You know, hey, except those days were cut short, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, the Lord will shorten those days. Right, so for our sakes, you know, the Lord's going to step in and he's going to, um, you know, speed this thing up, man. So shit, who, who knows what's going to happen in this coming year, man? You know, the last three years, you know, shit, there was so much shit that happened in the last three years, you can't even remember everything. You can't even remember all of the things that took place in the last three years. Shit, I, and me speaking for myself, I can't remember. I can't remember everything. It's too much. Hell, they got memes out here. They got memes out here now of, um, you know, kids in 2050, you know, studying the 2000, you know, 20 to 2025, you know, years in history books, right? You know, and they show the child with, with a confused, you know, a, a, a annoyed uh, face because it's, it's too difficult to try to comprehend everything that happened in this period of time, right? <laughs> Funny meme, but but it's true, but but it's true, right? Shit, the, you know, just to give a hypothetical, if this place was to go on, which we don't perceive that it will, right? We don't perceive that, but just to give a hypothetical, set hell, if fifty years in the future, if a child was to read a history book, of you know the last three years, sure that that that's enough to uh, to pass out on from an extreme headache. And those of us living it through it now, shit, we can't even remember everything that happened. Because it's too much. Right? It's too much that's taking place right now. You know, so it's, um, you know, we just got to wait and see what the Lord brings in this coming year, man. You know, we're just, we're watching, you know, patiently, man. Hey, what, oh, what is that scripture? That's Habakkuk chapter 3. What is that? Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Right, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run who reads it. Right, the vision's yet for an appointed time, but um, you know, but it's not yet. Right, the vision's yet for a appointed time. Yeah, so the visions in the scriptures, say for an example, regarding everybody having to take a microchip implant, that's gonna happen. It's not tomorrow. It, it didn't happen yesterday. It didn't happen last year. It didn't happen four years ago. Um, hell, might not even happen this year, but it could happen. It could happen, right? It's a possibility. You know, so we just gotta watch. You know, and that that's a that that's a good way to look at it, man. You know, we just gotta, you know, watch for what the Lord brings, because we know that um that the coming of Christ is near, man. And now, as far as what day or hour that's gonna happen, nobody knows that. So well, what's up with all, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but on the comment board, you have all these cats coming up there saying, I think, you know, I've done some calculations. So Christ is going to return on such and such date. It's like, uh, okay. But th there's this one dude on the comment board. He literally has been coming by an entire year. I kid you not, an entire year. Every single month, he comments on the comment board and says, you know, I've done some mouth. Uh, math uh, calculations and uh, you know it leads me to believe that Christ is going to return on such and such date and when that don't happen it comes back the next month and repeats the same thing just adds a couple more different numbers in and tries to put another date on it it's like damn you're still going around doing that a year later just wasting your time man it's like shit you're that much of a low life you don't got nothing else to do damn you know, so it's just, um, you know, it's unbelievable what's going on, man. That, that, that's that's just all you can say, man. You know, these guys on YouTube, shit, you, you not only do you got people out here trying to, con, you know, travel the country to try to convince people, you know, just believe on Christ and you can actively live a sinful lifestyle. As long as you don't call it sin, right? As long as you don't call it your action sin, that it's not sin for you. That's what the preacher is out there saying, right? Perry, the preacher. Literally travels the country and, uh, you know, street teaches 
to teach people just to call on Christ, believe that he died for the cross, you know, on the cross for your sins. And then once you claim that with your mouth, then that means, you know, the next day um, it would be uh, lawful in the God's eyes for you to uh, commit adultery or, you know, eat, um, you know, eels and, um, you know, rabbits and swine and uh, crawfish. That would all be okay as long as you believe in Christ. That's what these guys are out here saying. You, know, so you got that dumbass out there doing that. You have Primal Man trying to teach people that they're living in the kingdom right now. You got these other buffoons going around trying to convince... Like the, this guy, Eddie, right? This guy, Eddie. Which, Eddie's a cool guy, don't get me wrong, right? Eddie's pretty cool. Um, you know, he's, he's basically a Christian. Which now he calls himself a Hebrew Israelite. Or an Israelite. Um, but he's really just a Christian. You know, he, he's new to this. He's only like four months into this. Um... You know, but he's trying to, you know, hop on, you know, send us 50 messages every single day to try to convince us that, you know, the, the white people are not the Edomites, that salvation's open to all humans. It's like, damn, man, hey, look, you're not going to change your mind on it. You know, you admitted you're four months into this, man. Every verse you bring up, we've already had people bring it up to us a hundred times. And we've dealt with it every single time. So the positions that I myself and say Bible defender, you know, that we've came to on what we believe regarding the scriptures, we're not going to change that. As far as, say, salvation being open to all people, because that's not true. Salvation is only for the children of Israel, according to the Bible. Now, there are verses that you could read on face value. And just reading on face value, you could try to make an argument to make it look like it's for all people. But then once you look past the surface later, layer, you understand that it doesn't mean what it, it looks like it means. Like John 3.16. Yeah, I agree it says the world there. But who is the world? Then once we study the scriptures, we find out, okay, well, the world represents Israel. So again, on face value, you read it. It says the world. So, you know, you might say, oh, okay, well, see, that means everybody in the world. On face value, you could read it and come to that conclusion, but then once you actually study the Bible and come to the realization of what it's talking about, you then understand that that is not true. That the world actually, in context, represents the Israelites. So again, there are verses that you could read on face value and come to the conclusion that salvation is open to all people. I won't deny that. Of course you can read certain verses in the Bible and come up with any type of doctrine that you want. But then once you look past the surface layer, you find out that you had a misconception as to what it means. It's very simple to understand. So I won't I won't keep this for too long. I just want to do a uh, a quick video, you know, for 2023. So uh, I'm going to say shalom.